Can you see the black eye through the video here? <laughs> coach got himself a black eye. I, I see. Nose, all, everything. We're good. I you see that, Coach. Right? Yeah, they showed that in during the broadcast, and it looked like you had blood on your nose. What happened? Uh, the ball, one of the top spun in the dugout, so I'm on the on the top rail, and I got under the rail. Lo Coach Lopez was in front of me. Never saw the ball. He jumped out of the way, and I caught it with my face. I don't recommend <laughs> it. <laughs> Has that ever happened before? I mean, I know the dugout can be a dangerous place with foul balls. I mean, I've gotten hit, never in the face. Just usually you'd see it, but I got kind of blinded in the way the dugouts are set. Like you can't really see it. And all right. well, it was not fun. It was in the ninth inning, which was going to go down as the worst ninth inning of my life. Had that not turned out the way it, after that, uh, bloody towel, everything on the on the mic to the bullpen calling for people. It was it was outstanding. Well, well coach, just kind of reflect on last night's game. It was a wild yeah. one. You just mentioned that ninth inning. It looked like there was an opportunity to close out the game. That didn't happen. But then Danny Neri, like he came up big previously in the game with his third home run in the 11. Just kind of reflect on last night's win against Cincinnati. Yeah, it was, I mean, from the beginning, we were, after what Nate Taylor did to us the last time in, in our ballpark, really impressed with the at-bats early in the game, scoring early. Danny had the big home run in the second, and we chased that guy. Uh, and then pretty put, pretty solid baseball through the middle of that. Seth Logue was giving us fits. And then Danny Neri gets another two-run homer to give us some separation. Um, and then, I mean, Dom Castellano came in with first and second, nobody out, strikes out the side, pitches us through that. Sauce comes in and with the bases loaded and two outs to face Cross, one of the best hitters in the league, and gets us out of that mess. And, and honestly, Bauer, for all intents and purposes, he got us out of that mess in the ninth. We just didn't complete the play. And to deal with that, um, to deal with all of that and to come back and have somebody hit a home run and – and they're in the 11th inning and Kramer come out after sitting there for four hours and close that thing out. It was, it was outstanding. I was sitting next to Cedarburg as Danny was up and I was like, you think Danny could just hit the third one so we can go ahead and win this game? Like jokingly. And he hit it. And I was like, Oh, okay. Glad he did. Rich. Have you ever seen, oh, sorry, Trace. Rich. Have you ever seen a player locked in like Danny was last night? No, I've never, I don't think I've ever coached anybody's hit three home runs, especially in that situation, in that ballpark. I mean, that was his outstanding. He had four hits, too. I don't think he'd ever had four hits in his in one game in his career. And to catch 200-and-something pitches and the block the balls that he did and only fitting that he completes the, the last play of the game on that ball. Uh, Coach, more about the, the pitching. Dom Staggs did what you needed him to do. And have you seen nastier stuff from Sosnowski than you saw last night? No, and I mean, the stuff just – like we talked about before, the stuff just continues to get better. And he's another guy that loves the big moment and pitches his way through that. And to get that hitter out on three pitches in that situation, it's not really the situation we were trying to draw for him, but we did. If anybody was going to go do it, we thought Chris Sosnowski could go do it. He did it. And man, he was, he was electric. Coach, let's talk about your team's response from Cincinnati tying the game in the bottom of the ninth. Obviously the morale had to be down. You guys had to be like, almost like you got the, the, the wind knocked out of you. Did you give a message to the team or what was going on in that dugout uh, that allowed you guys to come back and win the game in extra innings? Yeah, well, obviously, I mean, even the play in the ninth by Graydon Calise, that's not an easy play. The backhand ball off the line to even get us out of the ninth um, was great. And you come and you can feel that. We, I felt it. The team felt it. And I just called the team up in the ninth and told them, hey, like that was not how we saw it going. I know it's terrible but we are going to win the game. We just got to keep playing. It's going to present itself. Be ready to go. We're going to find a way to win this game. And and we did. We had a shot to win it right there in the in the top of the 10th. Didn't get it done. Huge pickoff by Bauer and get back in. And we got to run in the 11th and got it done. Rich, what – I mean, obviously you still have more games to play, but what does a, a game like last night – what does that do for the, the morale on your team moving forward to the rest of this tournament? Yeah, it certainly doesn't doesn't hurt, right? Like, you got to find a way to win games like the last two ones that we won. Like, we were scratching and clawing in the, in the ninth inning to, to hold off Baylor and did it. Played really well for 90% of the game last night. Had a gut check moment and responded. Um, if you're going to do something at this level at this time of the year, you got to find a way to, to win games and win them that way. Coach, obviously, it's a unique tournament format. I think when everyone looked at it, they just kind of assumed that you would be playing on Wednesday. But with all the upsets and everything that happened yesterday, you find out very late that you're not going to play on Wednesday. You don't play till late on Thursday. How did you react? Is that is that good news, I guess, for your baseball program, maybe to give those relievers another day of rest? 
yeah, I, I told him in the press conference last night, I, I had no idea who or when we were playing. I was waiting for James to tell me. I went to bed and my wife told me about whatever time that was when she woke me up after I finally fell asleep. Um, but that was, she was okay to wake me up for that one. I'm good with that. <laughs> um, but we'll always take the day off with the pitching. It kind of gets Ben Vespi back to, to regular rest because like Stags went on short rest two starts in a row. Um, and now Ben gets a shot to, to pitch on regular rest and gives the bullpen another day and kind of gives us a little bit more options for tomorrow. But how do you uh, plan with that? Not knowing if you're playing today, you're playing tomorrow. Is that, do you have two game plans in case one thing happens or another, or do you just wait and see what happens and then go for adjust from there? Honestly, the game plan was to do whatever we had to do to win last night. Like that was the game plan, find a way to beat Cincinnati and whatever, however the dust settled, deal with that and adjust game plan going from there. I think, where our team is and in the situation we're here at the end of the season, it's play one game at a time and try to win that game and not get caught trying to plan for stuff that may never happen. You play so many games in a college baseball season. Momentum's got to be hard to carry, but when it's compressed like this, a win like that with Danny doing what he did, what does momentum look like in a tournament setting? Yeah, I think that it can only help, right? And you're, you're looking to get hot and stay hot. And, and honestly, we always talk about that. Momentum is two things, how you respond and how you deal with adversity and can you push through. And, and honestly, the next day starting pitcher, like if the next guy goes out there and pitches really well, you're going to feel really good about yourself and continue to roll. Would you talk more about Danny's season offensively and defensively and how it kind of built to that big moment? Yeah, and he's a guy throughout his career, you know, I coached him at Notre Dame, that created opportunities for himself defensively um, he got himself on the field at a young age because of the defensive prowess and we always just you know physicality and with the bat ever catch up with the defense and he just kind of saw it when I left Notre Dame I thought he was on that track and we get we got him back here in, in January and it looked pretty close and he made a few little adjustments throughout the year and he's he's been on it for the last three weeks. Coach, what was today's schedule like? Was there a place where the team could assemble and practice? What did you guys do today? Yeah, we went to UTA and we hit in the cages, did a little bit of defensive work on their field, not too much, really just a shorter workout. And then what we call our game prep lift in their football weight room. We just got done with. During the in-game interview, you talked about needing to cash in on opportunities. I imagine you're frustrated. You had multiple opportunities to really break the game open, especially early. Yeah, when we were five to two in the ninth, I, in my mind, it should have at least been eight to two. Like if we just execute with runners on third less than two and we got to do a better job with that. And that would, I mean, you could ask me that on opening day. That would have always been the, the same message where there's guys on third base less than two outs. Like there's chances to do damage. It makes the game a whole lot easier if you just cash in and do that. And it also makes what choices you make out of the bullpen. Eight to two ball game in the ninth is completely different than the, the five to two. and. It just changes the whole complexion of the game, but they're not guarantees. They're not, you're always not going to execute. You got also got to deal with when you don't and figure out a way to win. We did. Coach, what was that? Oh, I'm sorry, Bryson. Rich, okay. what was that celebration like though after the game? I mean, you, you, you've been around this team for a while. What was it like to get those guys together and celebrate that win? That was fun. Was, I told the guys, there's really not much to say, man. Just enjoy this. This was awesome to do it the way you did it. That, that was kind of UCF baseball in a nutshell. Not, the cleanliness of the ninth inning, but the toughness, the grit, the response, that's couldn't ask for more. Coach, speaking of the bullpen, each reliever ended up having a their own moment to shine in a way, whether it was Castellano fanning three straight, Kostosnowski with his first at batter, Bauer with the throwout, and then Kramer at the end. How important is it to have those guys get the day of rest today and just your thoughts on each of their abil abil moments last night? Yeah, and they've all they've all pitched in extremely big, high leverage situations all year, um, and and we've talked about that. Like, that's necessarily a closer. It's kind of who's available, who's the who's the best matchup in the in the moment, and they've all pitched in those. So to see them go out and continue to do what they've worked so hard to do in the biggest moment, obviously outstanding. And they'll all tell you they'll always take a day off if they can get one. Coach, speaking about the bullpen, were you trying to have Sosnowski try to toughen out that last out to try to save another arm in the bullpen? No, I, not really to save another arm. It's just right now he's been our best guy. And we, we, we'd we like to, if you look back at the matchup with him and Cross, like he's handled Cross pretty well. So we're getting through that. And we thought he had enough to finish it. But some of those at-bats, like he threw 50-something pitches, but 
there was probably 24 of them in two different at-bats. So he kind of got extended. And the length of that outing, it's a lot of pitches in one inning, no matter if you're a starter or a reliever. And we thought Maurer could come in there and get a couple ground balls, which he did. Um, just didn't turn out for us. How do you feel your team did adjusting to the dynamics of that ballpark? I think they handled it pretty well. Um, made some great plays in the outfield, handled the fly balls, the infield, as far as like securing the ball and being in the right position. I think, I think they handled it pretty well. What do you make of the uh, results so far in this tournament? Uh, you went in thinking this is wide open. Anybody could win it. And already there's been uh, some surprising results. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, people say surprising, but if you look at the league as a whole outside of Oklahoma, like everybody else was pretty much bunched up and up to three weeks ago, I mean, there was probably two games separating seven teams. Um, this team, this league is deep, it's talented, and you put people, got talented baseball players with talented coaches and programs on a stage like this, playing for their lives, crazy stuff happens. Coach, you've known Danny Neri from from before, and of course, coming into this, he had only four home runs the entire season up to that point. What did it mean to you to witness what I think some might argue would be the game of his life last night? Yeah, it's pretty like it's when guys put in the work that you feel like the the work, the the effort they put in, the intensity, the focus reflects somebody that deserves to have success in that moment, and you see him do it. That's that's unbelievable as a coach like you you watch a guy do that couldn't be more proud I mean there's guys that work their butt off and do that stuff all and they never actually get rewarded for it but to see him get rewarded for it and our team to get rewarded for it in one of the biggest games of the year on the biggest stage was was outstanding coach back on your eye did you need to get checked out x-rays uh, anything like uh, that after uh Dom's dad Dom Castellano's dad's an ENT he looked at me after the trainer that's really as far as we've gotten uh We'll wait till we get back to Orlando if we're doing anything with that stuff. So, no, no issues seeing, no vision issue. I, I can see. So that's my headaches, all that good stuff, and a lot of blood in the dugout. My poor, poor trainer's shoes were not the same color as they were before the ac accident. So, but she, she's a rock star. She handled it great. I guess you and Andrew Braid are now in the getting hit in the face club together now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I was in a UCF uh, uniform, I got hit in the face with a baseball. We went to the NCAA tournament. So, I'll. I'll Hopefully that's a good sign. Andrew Butera hit me in, a, in the cage one time. He missed hit a ball and hit me right in the face. And that was an 04, so hopefully we can do the same. You guys good? Awesome. Near I coming in. Hey, everybody. Hey, Danny, congratulations on your big game last night. Well, I guess, first of all, just kind of reflect on that. You get to play at an MLB stadium. I'm sure that was just kind of cool just doing that. And then you had maybe the game of your career. Yeah, uh, beautiful stadium, beautiful venue. Super grateful for the opportunity to uh, play a tournament like this there. And, you know, it, that park plays big. And so whenever we all walked in for BP uh, a couple of days ago, we were trying to get balls out of there. I didn't even hit ball, ball out in BP. So I definitely didn't think I was going to be able to run three out of there during the game, um, but glad I was able to make it happen. Danny, on that third home run, when you went up to the plate, what, what was it that locked in maybe that you were you, – did you think you were going to hit another one? I mean, it was did anyone say anything to you when you went up there about it or what? No. Um, I mean, I knew there were two outs, and so me, you know, hitting a single probably wasn't going to help us a ton. So I was trying to, you know, hit something for extra bases. But then I got into a two-strike count. I think I got a couple pitches earlier in the at-bat that I could have driven and I missed them. And then I got into that two strike count. And ironically, the last swing, the last home run was the only one where I thought I wasn't going to hit a home run. Uh, he went three, two fastball up and in, and I just kind of like threw my hands at it. And I looked up and I saw the right fielder tracking towards the wall. And I was like, there's no way that's going out. And then it went into the stands. I was just like, oh my God, there's no way that just happened. It was pretty good. Obviously, the uh, talk of social media with this performance, you got the shout out from Woj. What's the connection there between you and, and Adrian Wojnarski? Uh, he and my dad actually grew up together in Bristol, Connecticut. So they're best friends. My dad was the best man at his wedding. So he and I stay in close touch. Uh, he comes and visits every once in a while, and he's always asking about baseball and watching the games. And so uh, naturally there comes a time uh, with every team I've been on where he interacts with the social media team somehow, and everyone's like, why is Woj uh, on our social media pages? And so I have to give that explanation. But, yeah, he's a, he's a close family friend, and that's why – He's 
paying so much attention to UCF baseball these days. Hey, Danny, big game, first Big 12 Conference tournament game, um, first time playing in the Texas arena. What does it mean to be the hero of that game? But like, what, like putting the team, like you can technically say on your back and, and helping that team to the win. Yeah, more than anything, uh, helping us get the win was the best part of that night. Um, getting a win in that game was huge for us, especially with the position we're in, trying to make a postseason push and, and get deep into this tournament. And so obviously every player is going to tell you that they're going to do whatever they can to help the team win. And luckily I was able to, to do that last night. And uh, so, you know, as, as exciting as it was, coming out with a victory was the best part of all of it. Danny, I'm sure early in the game, I, you guys probably felt like you left some runs on the board, but what was the team thinking in that ninth inning? You felt like there was opportunities to close out and get the win and they come back and tie just as you went into extra innings. What was the team feeling like at that moment? Definitely had a moment of having to calm down and, and recollect yourself and think, okay, this is the position we're in. Like, yeah, we should have probably won the game, but we didn't. Um, but the coaches pulled us over and said, doesn't really matter what happened before this still in the game. It's still a tie game. We got every chance in the world to win. And so from that point on, you just have to go into, you know, thinking neutrally and, and saying, these are the facts. This is what we got to do. And guys went up, put good at bats together, uh, weren't able to scrape a run across in the 10th. And then, you know, I got lucky and got a pitch to hit and the staff was able to close it out. So. Were you surprised that you got pitched to in that the way you were swinging all night? Were you, what was your approach going to that last at bat? And were you surprised they went after you considering how well you've been swinging all night? I don't think that was necessarily the plan. They started me off with some off speed stuff early, and then I think I, I got ahead 2 0. And in that situation in a tie game, you don't want to put anybody on via the walk. So I think they had to give me a couple pitches to hit. And even then, they were, you know, outside, up and away, pitches that I didn't have a lot to do with. And even the last one, wasn't a super hittable pitch. It was right at the top of the zone and, um, you know, managed to pull my hands in on it. I think they were a little more careful later in the game, but um, also the chances that someone hits one out three times in one game, I don't think they were banking on that. So with two outs and nobody on, uh, I figured they were just hoping I was going to hit fly out or something, um, get myself out and was able to avoid that. Dan, what are I you guess the most proud of this season, offensively and defensively, the consistency that all builds to a night like last night? Um, yeah, nobody really expects to have a night like that. I was telling my parents that last night. Like, I didn't ever think I was going to have a three-home run night on a stage like that. Um, I just try to come in and focus, like you said, on being consistent on both sides of the ball every night and helping the team out however I can. Sometimes that's like at Baylor on Sunday, laying a couple bunts down. Sometimes it's – catching well, even if you don't contribute a ton at the plate. Sometimes it is hitting a home run. Um, and so I just focused on trying to do whatever I can in every at-bat, every inning behind the plate, and happened to go my way a few more times last night. Certainly didn't expect it to go that way, but glad it did. No pressure, but can you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try, I guess. You know, you're always, always going to see what you can do, but uh, I wouldn't bank on it. What were your teammates reacted to when you hit that third home run? You're the first player ever to hit three home runs in a Big 12 tournament game. What were your players, like, kind of teammates telling you uh, were, after the fact? Well, after the second one, I got in the dugout, and they were all like, where is this coming from? Like, you know, <laughs> like who the heck is this guy? And then at the last one, they didn't have a whole lot to say. I think most of them were kind of speechless because, like I think someone mentioned earlier, I had four home runs the entire season. I almost doubled it in one game, and so most of them were just – I don't think they knew what to say. I didn't def definitely didn't know what to say. Um, they were, you know, giving me hugs and high fives. It was a great moment. Danny, it's an interesting tournament format. I think most people probably figured you'd be playing today, but with all the upsets, you guys don't play until late Thursday night. So you had the day off and it sets up well. If you win tomorrow night, you're you're baked into that semifinal on Friday. Just how does how do the guys feel about having today off? We feel great. We were uh, a few of us were in our hotel room watching the Texas, Texas Tech game last night pulling hard for the Red Raiders so we could have an off day for all of our bodies to recover and let the pitcher's arms recover. Um, it's huge. Anytime you can get an extra day of rest, especially for your staff. So we'll be well rested in the pen. And like you said, now being three wins away from a Big 12 championship is, is pretty cool. Obviously, you just got to take it one game at a time, but we've put ourselves in a pretty good position. Danny, Danny. Every, I think every kid uh, grows up believing, you know, wants to hit that home run, the game winning home run, everything like that. What was going through your mind running the bases on that, that third one? Not a whole lot. Mostly just like, holy cow, did that just happen? I, you know, I saw our third base coach Lopez was 
big smile on his face. And I was, I was so excited to have been able to put us back on top, especially in a game that meant that much. And I sat back down on the bench after getting into the dugout and getting through everybody and had a genuine moment of like, Oh my gosh, did that actually just happen? Like, am I, am I misremembering? Like, I can't believe it. Um, it took me a long time to process it, even after the game that I hit three home runs in the same game. Never something I would have thought I would do. Danny, it's the dream of many a young baseball player to play at the highest level. You got to play on that stage of the highest level of Globe Life Field, the home of the Texas Rangers, and you homered in that stadium not once, not twice, but three times. What does that just mean to you playing this, playing this sport and getting a chance to have a game like that? Yeah, um, performing on any stage is a great feeling, but to perform on that stage was awesome. To hear the ball rebound off the bleacher seats and right after the first one was really, really cool. Um, that's one of those little things that I think most people wouldn't wouldn't really appreciate unless you've been playing the game your whole life. That's a pretty cool, pretty cool moment for me. Um, and just that whole atmosphere, my parents were there and um, beautiful stadium, beautiful venue, just – couldn't have asked for it to happen in a better place. My dad even said, he's like, you could have had, you know, this happen to you at any point throughout the season, but it seems it's, it's fitting and it's fortunate that it happened on this stage and I couldn't agree more. How much did your phone blow up? Have you caught up on all your messages? It was nuts. I was, I didn't expect it to really, I guess, because it's like I hit three home runs in a game, but it's not that crazy, I guess, except for the fact that it was in the tournament and I didn't realize till after the game, nobody had ever done that before. And I was scrolling through my phone for hours of people that I hadn't talked to in months, you know, wishing me congratulations and new followers on Instagram and tweets that are, you know, getting tweeted at me and stuff. Something I've certainly not had to deal with before. And I think a couple hours ago, I was able to get to all the messages and respond to everybody. But it was really cool to see the support from so many people. Danny, what is the plan for tonight? Do you play the uh, the Texas Tech Oklahoma State winner? Are the guys going to be watching that game? Uh, I guess the game plan might be contingent on, on who you'll be playing tomorrow. Yeah, I think a few of us are going to go over to the stadium to watch that game. Um, so probably a five or ten minute walk from here, and we all get credentialed to get in there for free. So probably grab grab some dinner with the fellows, head over to the field, watch the game. Uh, pretty relaxed night, and regardless of who we end up playing, the game plan doesn't change. So just going to have a good time. Danny, you had a front row seat to the performance from all the pitchers of the of the evening. Considering the moments that Castellano, Sosnowski, Bauer, and Kramer had, what was it like like catching for them last night? And how big is it, you know, because you know the catchers, but the pitchers as much as you do, that they get a day off to rest today? Yeah, it's always a pleasure catching for those guys. Both the Doms did a fantastic job giving us some length early, and then Sauce, Bauer, Kramer all came in and did an, an incredible job. Um, so the fact that those guys were able to have the performance they did make my job so easy, uh, you know, help out the team and then have a day to rest. So uh, hopefully, even if they're not available tomorrow, hopefully available the next day, uh, it sets us up really well. And obviously you want those guys to be in the game as much as possible. You guys good? One more. I was waiting for everybody else to stop. <laughs> Danny, just how is this team handling the, the push? Like you said, you're not guaranteed a spot in the big dance, but you know if you make a pretty good pitch over the next few days, last night included, that could be something in the future. How is this group handling that? I think we're handling it well, especially being a group that doesn't have a ton of guys that have been in this situation before. I know some of the transfers have, but um, I think all things considered, we've done a, a great job just taking it one game at a time and it's a tough situation to not really know what your future holds, but it's also easy to know that you take care of the next game, you take care of the game you're playing. And uh, ideally if you do it enough times, it'll work out, but the morale's high. The guys are confident. Coach Wallace has done a fantastic job of getting this team ready. So we all feel really good about it, really confident, and we're excited to keep going. That's all I've got. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Congrats. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Danny. Thank you.